right now, right, one of the things that's been happening lately, uh, I don't know if it's happening around the country or not, but for us in Oregon, um, we've realized that grafting in the fall is actually more successful than grafting in the spring. That comes with a big capital IF, if you can provide winter protection from freezing. You see. Mm -hmm. If they freeze, it will fail. Okay? Mm -hmm. If they freeze at all, it will fail. Alright? So, the contrast to that is, if you graft in the spring, right, you can't set them out in direct sun immediately. You can't do it. They'll fry the graft. So, you either have to provide protection from sun and wind, or protection from freezing. But the fall grafts tend to take off better and they tend to be more successful. Okay? So one of the most important things about successful grafting that a lot of people don't talk about is uh, an appropriate scion, right? So we've got a lot of different situations here where we've got growth on the ends of these things and most of these are not going to be good for what we're doing, okay? So even when we sit here and we look at these, right? This is too woody. This will never take, ever, right? Too woody too um, blocky at the tip, right? It's a failure. We see these guys that have been cut. Okay, so they've been cut and we've got these small buds. So we can't graft with this, it's too short of a distance. We can't graft with this, it's too soft and fleshy, right? That's all failures, okay? All failures. So ideally if you're grafting, to prepare for grafting, you're gonna leave it for a year where you don't cut the bud, okay? So that you have one good long extension of woody growth. Okay. So this is as close as we can get here. Even though this was cut, this had a good strong extension. This is still too fleshy. If you try to graft with this, chances are that will fail. Okay, still too fleshy. But this is going to be our sample. So I'm going to borrow Aaron's grafting knife. If he's okay with that. Yep, absolutely. That's why I brought it. I'm going to borrow his. Uh, yeah, 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 cut on that. Sorry. Yep. Anybody see? Oh, here we go. Okay. Preparation of the graft. Very important. Right? We need to pluck these needles so that we have a good, clean, clear, exposed scion. Now, this is a very gray area. How many needles do we leave on the end of this? It depends. We want to leave enough so that this doesn't, right? This doesn't completely exhaust itself of resources prior to the parent tree taking over allocation to this bud. Okay? So if we pluck this down to two or three needles and we graft with it, it will die because there's no carbohydrates being created here photosynthetically. Okay? If we leave too much, it's going to demand too much moisture to keep all of these needles turgid, and it will die because it just it doesn't have any moisture. Right? So that fine line generally tends to be at least one complete ring of needles, if not two. Okay? One complete ring, if not two. So for the skinnier the shoot, the fewer the needles. The thicker the shoot, the more needles that we need. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when we're grafting, we've got a long section and a short section, right? This graft or this bud obviously has a natural incl inclination. If we make the long section, the long section being the section that's in contact with the portion it's being grafted to, if we make the long section on the portion that curves away and we try to stick this in against something here, it's going to be dif difficulty at contact and probably what's going to happen is we'll break this scion. Okay, so when we make this long cut, we always want to have this facing upside down, hold the needles, okay, when we take our grafting knife, we start right at the base of the needles. We want this cut, we don't want to start here, we don't want to have this long of an inner node. If you're grafting, you're trying to shorten things, okay, so we're going to start right at the base of the needles, and we're going to use this thumb to apply the pressure. So this isn't whittling, right, this is a calculated, consistent effort where we use this thumb to apply the pressure and notice this hand pulling this. Did you see that? How I pulled that scion as I pushed? Like so. Okay, you see how beautiful that cut is? Right? Nice, long, exposed, even cut. The longer, the better. Okay? The shorter, the less chance you have of success. Okay? So now, this is the kicker right here. This side has to be much shorter. This is a very fast cut. Okay, one quick cut. All right, if you have a really sharp knife, Aaron, you need to sharpen your knife. <laughs> if you have a really sharp knife, it's one quick cut. And then we take this, we set this here, and we cut off that jagged edge so that we have a good, clean, solid end and tip to the scion. Okay, 
So this is our scion. That's ready to go. So when we're picking a site to graft, we're going to be grafting near a crotch, near an intersection with the trunk, somewhere where we're close. No, there would be no reason to graft all the way out here, right? Because we're trying to, to replace this distance. We're trying to replace this foliage, which means we want to do that from here and have the new material that we're putting on this start at the closest proximity we can to the area that we're trying to replace, okay? So let's say, for example, because we've got something, something this thin, that we're going to do it from someplace, a location here in close, okay? This is a controlled cut again, where I'm holding just the same as I held the needles in this hand, and I'm going to be pushing with this thumb. This isn't whittling, okay? This has got to be controlled. And we want to go at least 30, if not 50% of the way through the branch, okay? Now you have to be careful. You go too far, all of a sudden it becomes structurally weak, this breaks, and now not only does your graft fail, you have a dead branch, okay? Why should we do this at the top or bottom of the branch? It depends on where you want the, what purpose this bud is serving, yeah. right? So if you're replacing a branch and you can get to the bottom and do it effectively, it'd be ideal. Yeah. If you're trying to create a branch and you do it on the top, you've just created a structural flaw from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So chances are right, left, or bottom are going to be the best places mm -hmm. for you to graft on yeah. new branches, okay? So now you've got your scion. So this is tough because I'm sitting here holding this, right? You guys are going to have to cut me a little bit of slack. I need to hold that. Um, where did it even go? Here it is. I think I can do it. Okay? So you've got your scion with your long cut. Okay? You've got your nice long cut here. When you insert these, you have one shot. Okay? So you line this, the, the cambial layers up from the beginning. Do we all understand what the cambium is? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> green to green. Green to green. Okay? So we've got the cambial layers exposed in here. We've got cambial, the green, green line on the exterior. Mm -hmm. Green, <coughs> green line. Green, got it? Yeah. Okay, we line those up here, and in one smooth motion, we bury that graft as deep as it can possibly go. <coughs> okay? So, if we get it in there and we screwed up, it's done, right? There's no going back and redoing mm -hmm. it. You have one shot, because those cells in that layer that you've cut with this extra sharp blade, the second that they mesh together, if you start moving them again, it damages them and your take, your percentage decreases exponentially. <coughs> okay? So, we cut a, <coughs> and use branches and practice like that? You should probably practice. That's right. No, we'll try okay, so now, <laughs> now I'm going to let you hold that there. Okay. So when we start talking about creating the, the exterior for this, there's a lot of different methods for doing I this, right? There's a, there's a I bag. Always, I always okay, we can talk about that later. <laughs> talk about it later. Right? So there's the bag method. I prefer the cocoon method, all right? I'm going to make this really easy on myself here. So, so don't do this in real life. <laughs> okay, so you've got paraffin film. This is the best material that we can use for this. Pre-stretch it so that you've already got the elasticity, elasticity out of it, okay? So you want to make a good solid wrap and get this fully secured right here at this point, okay? Once you've got a few wraps on it, then you can support, pull and stretch, and really bind that region. Support, pull and stretch, bind that region, okay? Now once this is secured, this shouldn't move, okay? So now we can pull and stretch. Now we've got to get out onto this needle. So every single time, I make a good clean wrap, I'm going to hold, pull and stretch, and just create an even uniform climb up this bud. How tightly are you binding those needles? Not very. Not very. So I'm sitting here and supporting it, <coughs> but if you can see, they're going to be clumped together, mm -hmm. right? But this isn't tight. Because hmm. totally. all, all you're trying to do is stop desiccation. All you're trying to do is stop moisture loss, right? So they make parafilm that's got a lot more width to it. We use inch and a half width to graft. Okay, so here's the killer. We're done here, right? This is a good solid application. Now pre-stretch a fairly significant piece here, right? And then when you get to the end of this, you're gonna fold and then you're gonna twist. 
Okay, twist that end and then support and pull. And that's the end of it. Right? So that saves you all of the problem of bagging and putting moss around the joint. It's good, it's clean. And then here's the kicker, right? So once this starts to grow in the spring, you're gonna see this pooch out because that bud's gonna start to swell. It's gonna get thick and fat and there's no room for it. You're gonna see this pooch out and you're gonna see the bud gravitate through these needles to the very top of this plastic. If this is sitting like this, then it'll, it'll gravitate towards the top of this. Okay, and you'll see the bud starting to have contact. Once you see that bud swell and you see that bud moving towards the exterior, you're gonna take this and you're gonna start the opening process. All you have to do is pull, okay? That just opens up a little bit, okay? So you wanna open this up maybe five or 10% at a time. So you open it up a little bit, you're gonna leave that 10 to 14 days, okay? If this continues to push, it continues to swell, it continues to move towards the exterior, then we can pull a little bit more, okay? We leave it 10 to 14 days, pull a little bit more, pull a little bit more, pull a little bit more, and now all of a sudden the bud is free. You want to tear that off right there, leave this wrapped. Don't leave that joint fully open, right? So this is two months to get it fully opened. Once you get to this section, you should have a bud that's ready to take over. Okay? Magic, huh? That's awesome. Yeah.